Good morning, Good morning, televiewers of my media, Prime Television. You're on to your favorite bilingual program, The Brief, which is always dedicated to the review of striking headlines in the papers. On today's edition of the program, the newspapers are focusing or still focusing on the steering committee meeting of uh, the presidential plan for the reconstruction and development of the northwest and southwest regions. A meeting was held at the Prime Minister's office on Friday to examine how far the plan has gone 18 months after the full implementation or its full implementation. We shall be telling you more as relayed by newspapers and also reports uh, that uh, was done for us by my Media Prime's uh, news uh, room talking about the meeting and the revelation of uh, what actually uh, is happening in the northwest and southwest regions as uh, so many facilities have been rebuilt and uh, some donors still hesitating uh, to honor their words when it comes to pledging uh, monies for the reconstruction. And this time around, some newspapers are focusing on the 40 billion francs CFA France promised Cameroon, uh, or promised to support Cameroon for the rebuilding of the northwest and southwest regions of uh, the country. First scarcity in the country, government finally arrest the situation as. Uh, uh, more monies have been pumped uh, into uh, the sector to subsidize uh, the sector, as uh, we shall be telling you more. And yesterday, in the nation's economic capital, motorists uh, began uh, going about their daily activities unperturbed after uh, the scarcity or first scarcity hit uh, the uh, city. We shall tell you more in this edition of uh, the program. And uh, today, we will be having Dr. Nicolas uh, Santos who is joining us on the line to uh, the United States of America to talk about uh, uh, what or discuss some of these burning issues as well as uh, his uh, award. He has been honored by the government of the United States of America. Stay with us. Let's find out what Gladys Bomonton Guina gathered for us in the French language newspapers. Bonjour, Gladys. Bonjour, Lasha Kinsley. Bonjour à vos fidèles téléspectateurs de My Media Prime Television et bienvenue à cette autre édition de votre émission bilingue de revue de presse. Alors, ce matin, nous allons débuter avec le journal Émergence quotidien. Le journal Émergence quotidien nous parle à sa grand titre de finances. Le MINFI qui impose donc aux banques et aux microfinances la gratuité de, de 22 services. La liste de ces 22 services sont donc dans cette édition de Émergence quotidien à sa page 3. Dans le même journal à sa page 7, le journal nous parle de la filière de cacao café. Résultat mitigé après 39 milliards de francs CFA injectés dans cette filière. Litige, le coq sportif menace donc la FECA faute de poursuite judiciaire. Les détails sont en page 9 d'émergence quotidien ce matin. Nous poursuivons, mesdames, messieurs, avec le journal Le Jour. Le journal Le Jour nous parle en grand titre de gasoil, la pénurie qui inquiète donc les populations. Pourquoi Les transporteurs doutent donc des assurances du ministère de l'eau et de l'énergie. Les détails sont en page 2 et 3 du journal Le Jour ce matin. À sa page 5, le journal nous parle de la ville de Yokadouma. Cinq morts dans un incendie. Si malène, l'aéroport reçoit donc la certification de classe A. Les détails sont en page 6 du journal Le Jour ce matin. Nous poursuivons, mesdames, messieurs, avec l'info à chaud. L'info à chaud nous parle en grand titre de la rupture abusive du contrat à part la FECA Foot, le coq sportif qui veut donc saisir la justice. Les détails sont en page 3 du journal Info à chaud ce matin matin. En page 6, le journal nous parle de la Madjenie. L'assainissement des ressources humaines sont, est donc en chantier. Nous clôturons mesdames, messieurs, ce matin avec le journal Mutation quotidien. Le journal Mutation quotidien nous parle en grand titre de Mokolo. Peur sur le marché. En 10 jours d'intervalle, deux explosions de bombes artisanales font des blessés dans cet espace marchand de Yaoundi. Les détails sont donc en page 5 de Mutation quotidien ce matin. À sa page 7, le journal nous parle de la valeur de l'euro qui est en baisse, le franc CFA qui est donc face à la chute. En page 8, le journal nous parle de crise sécuritaire, le chemin de la Croix-Rouge. Mesdames, Messieurs, c'est ici que nous arrêtons pour ces titres en langue française. Place à la découverte des titres en langue anglaise avec toi, la Kinsley. Thank you, Gladys Bomotongina. Let's kick start this morning with uh, the National Bilingual Daily Cameroon Tribune. 
Cameroon Tribune this morning is interested in uh, the decision of the government to arrest the situation of uh, fuel or hydrocarbons in the country. Fuel scarcity, which hit major cities in the country, is now a thing of the past as the measures taken by government is already yielding uh, fruits. We are told by the National uh, Bilingual or National Bilingual Daily Cameroon Tribune that uh, in Douala, the economic capital of the country, Gazo, is progressively being uh, found at uh, filling stations. As we are told, motorists and car owners are going about their daily activities on Patev, according to the paper, and Elecam two electoral board members appointed. As uh, yesterday, the President of the Republic of uh, the country appointed two new members while maintaining the mandates of other members of uh, the uh, elections uh, of Cameroon or electoral board of the country elections uh, Cameroon. And uh, in uh, Cameroon Tribune this morning, we are telling you about, or the paper is telling us about Yaoundé Simalen International Airport that gets a Class A certification. The certificate uh, reflecting the conformity to international standards of the equipment and the services offered by the International Airport were presented yesterday, July 12, 2022, and uh, in Yaoundé in the presence of the Minister of uh, Transport of the country. The certification is expected to attract more foreign uh, airline companies uh, to augment the volumes of traffic of the airport uh, in the, the country. More details on page 7 of this edition of uh, the uh, National Bilingual Daily Cameroon Tribune. And uh, we're taking you to L'Action, L'Action newspaper, to talk about monies that have been pumped into the agricultural sector in a bit uh, to meet up with local demands. We are talking about uh, uh, wheat, uh, wheat in the country, wheat production and other cereals in the country. The President of the Republic has ordered the disbursement of uh, 10 billion francs CFA subvention to that sector in a bid to arrest uh, the crisis that uh, the country is facing when it comes to uh, uh, wheat and uh, its uh, products. Uh, uh, this uh, more in this edition of L'Action News uh, Paper and uh, the reconstruction of the Northwest and Southwest region gaining much ground, writes uh, uh, L'Action News uh, Paper. A meeting to that effect was held at the Prime Minister's office that was on Friday to evaluate how far the plan has uh, been covered or roadmap of uh, the uh, plan 18 months after its implementation. Let's leave uh, L'Action newspaper. We are with the Guardian Post. The Guardian Post newspaper is also focusing on the reconstruction plan for the northwest and southwest regions. The, this time around, the paper is worried about the money that was pledged by France. And France, according to the paper, disappears after pledging 40 billion francs as CFA to support uh, Cameroon. And uh, France, uh, according to the paper, reportedly gone mute after pledging the colossal sum of 40 billion francs CFA for the construction of the country's presidential plan for the reconstruction of the northwest and southwest regions. And uh, the non respect of France's uh, gentleman promise made in October 2019 came to the fore last Friday during the fourth session of the steering committee of the presidential plan which seeks to reconstruct uh, the war ravaged regions of uh, the country. Porter Song uh, stated clearly during the meeting that France is still yet uh, or yet to give the 40 billion she promised uh, uh, the country that was in October. Uh, 2019 and the government announces measures to address fuel scarcity in uh, the country. The measures uh, were announced uh, recently through the Minister of Water and Energy Resources Gaston Elundu Esomba uh, who made it public uh, uh, in a release that was issued Monday, uh, July 11, 2022. We stay with uh, the Guardian Post the newspaper to talk about uh, a pregnant woman who has lost her life alongside her three children in Yukodoma, Yukodoma, Yukodoma in the east region of uh, the country. The sad incident happened uh, recently where the woman perished in a fire accident alongside three of her children, as uh, the paper tells us. Let's talk about this other uh, sad story in Douala where a worker has vamoosed with uh, over 70 million francs CFA money uh, meant for his boss. 
And after doing that, he set the boss's uh, shop at uh, Blaise, at Blaise, as the paper tells us, while vamoosing with the sum of 70 million francs as CFA. You can read more in this edition of uh, the Guardian Post newspaper. We end with municipal updates. Municipal updates newspaper this morning is focusing on uh, the measures taken by government to arrest uh, uh, scarcity of fuel in uh, the country. Government arrests uh, fuel scarcity crisis writes uh, municipal updates uh, news uh, paper. You can read more in this edition of municipal updates newspaper talking about the measures of government that is already yielding fruit when it comes to arresting the scarcity of fuel across the national territory. We are back, televiewers of my media prime television, to continue talking uh, the burning issues as raised by newspapers uh, this uh, morning. Gladys, and uh, we are joined by Dr. Nicolas Santos uh, from uh, the United States of America. Doctor, good morning and welcome. It's been long. Yeah, good morning, Mr. Lash Jackins. Uh, good morning, Gladys. Uh, it's a to be on the Miley Prime, and I hope you guys have been doing well. Okay, Doctor, uh, before we come to uh, what we, <laughs> is of prime importance to you this morning, let's begin with the burning issues that we have in the country. We are talking about fuel scarcity. Government has announced uh, measures to arrest the situation and we are already reading in other newspapers that uh, uh, car owners are smiling in Douala and Yaoundé after the government's uh, measure. Yeah, I think uh, it's not only a Cameroonian problem, it's a world problem. Um, we're getting gas prices in the United States now for twice the price or close to three times the price. A liter is close to about $5 of which at least a liter used to be $1.75 to $2. And uh, I believe that is uh, because of uh, us coming from a pandemic, which is coronavirus, that we were locked down for about two years at home then, most especially with uh, the second uh, world crisis, which is the Ukraine war, uh, the war between uh, Russia and Ukraine, and the fact that the European Union, Union and the uh, other stakeholders of NATO are not able to reach an agreement on breaking the chains over this war. So I think uh, it's a world crisis, a world fuel crisis. There's no only crisis of fuel. There's crisis in sugar, the crisis in power, there's cri there is crisis in other many in other areas of production that Russia was uh, one of the key. So um, let's not just consider it a Cameroonian problem. It is a world problem. Like, Yes, uh, Doctor, we are equally reading in the papers that uh, dollars has uh, risen uh, comparatively to euros, and uh, that has also affected the French CFA. And uh, some newspapers are even talking about devaluation. Is that the reason why we are facing what we are facing in Cameroon uh, these days? Yeah, um, so to speak, uh, you see, uh, the world powers, or the economy, the big five, or the big six, or whatsoever, or G7 or G8, they know what they are doing. Because um, uh, if I look at this war, the war in Russia, just like the pandemic, it's one of the strategies that um, uh, those these war powers used to penetrate uh, the entire globe or change the, the entire uh, uh, interpretation of war, economic, and political politics. So you see that um, it's impacting us because of. Uh, so concepts that come out, because war is a concept, war is a concept. I don't see anything that cannot be talked over by resolution and dialogue that will lead to this kind of uh, 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 ramifications worldwide, you know? I mean, I always look at it like uh, people who think the big guns or the big fishes play business with our lives. Because um, if something can be resolved that will not lead to hike in currency, uh, affect the world exchange market, affect the price of flour, sugar, and everything. No. Now, uh, I, I mean, you will not also you to even hear some girls are telling you that the price of things have gone up as well because of the Ukraine war and Russia war. It's not only dollar price. Maybe they will, they will say, look at that, like price will not go up because of war, right? <laughs> <laughs> Doctor, what are we doing with our uh, local solutions? Is it not time for us to, to try to live like an island, probably looking at our local solution? Which 
can be produced in Cameroon yeah. and other cities. And the government just pumped uh, 10 billion into Iraq for research and uh, production of this series to meet up with local demand. This, this comes back to what I have been preaching from the get go. Um, you see, the diaspora is always a very, very important backbone to the economy of every country in the world. And what citizens of every country do is that when they go abroad, Truth, you cannot effect the change by yourself. It takes a whole nation of youths, for example, to rebuild a nation. It takes some of us who have been out to adventure into fields of study which can be beneficial to our people. For example, I'm in the domain of mental health and psychiatry. What I did here when I did my studies was going back to Nigeria, trying to integrate some of our local treatments into mental health alongside the white man's psychotherapy. And that's a holistic method of treatment that even today, if we don't have the white man's supply of medication, we can develop our local helps and develop all those spiritual healing as we cure our own mind people. And that's what I defended my doctorate thesis on. So if some people go out, they learn how to use local wheat and corn to refine our own bread, then we will not depend on uh, importation of flour from grain. Then we will not face the shortage. If our own fuel is being recycled in our own country and consumed back at home, rather than sending it into France for France to reproduce it and send it back to us, then this is where we are in, we are in problems. Take, for example, Rwanda. Kakami has already uh, set, uh, sent, uh, set up a satellite in Rwanda and is developing Rwanda. Uh, one ship can, in the next 10 to 15 years, survive on their own without dependence from the external world. So let, it is time that we develop our, our youths, learn to develop something, bring it back to the country, uh, 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 refine it, work on it, spread their knowledge, develop it so that when time to come, we will not depend on, on uh, 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 economies. If we had, our, for example, we are talking about the CFA plans, which, which is going up. Cameroon does not even have a, a, a central bank that this is its own currency. So this is a problem. We cannot continue to live on the dictates of the outside community, Mr. Lasha. Okay. It's painful. Okay, Doctor, let, let's talk about what you have always been very bitter about. We are talking about the war in the Northwest and Southwest regions. Uh, almost the, region has, uh, the regions have almost been destroyed by those who say they want their country. And uh, on Friday, a plan that was put in place by President Paul Bia, uh, the Met, uh, led by Paul Tassong, to examine how far they have gone with the reconstruction or rebuilding of those regions of the country and some uh, partners who pledged uh, to support Cameroon are still hesitating to give the money. Uh, we are talking about France, uh, which pledged uh, 40 billion and up to now that we are speaking, the money is still nowhere to be found. I just, I just said something in addressing the last question about France and there you were again France. You know, <laughs> we are depending on some people to rebuild a war in our region. Is that not a more claim? That's, that's funny because it takes us, we, the Cameroonians, we can rebuild. It's simple to rebuild. You know, it's simple to rebuild because, you know, uh, this is caused by a war which is an ideological warfare. It's a war between business partners. We have been in a war with, caused by business partners. I mean, if you, if you want to see the war in the Northwest and the Southwest, the Northwest and the Southwest, you want to study it in depth, you will discover that it, it, it's an organized war. Because the people who are profiting from the war don't want the war to stop. You're talking about a reconstruction plan. Yes, let's be, let's be tactical and let's be categorical. How can you reconstruct in the midst of a good way war? That's terrible. Okay. Because let me tell you, <laughs> frankly, frankly, we cannot reconstruct. Okay, Doctor, doctor let's, let's, let's listen to Paul Tasson. You react after this. Let's listen to Paul Tasson. I cannot hear you. Development over a period of 10 years were estimated at 2,500 billion. This is in terms of figures. Today, we have only Japan who has stepped up the plate initially to support us with 1.5 billion 
and uh, we are currently actively working with them mm -hmm. for an additional 900 million, which should take us to 2.5 billion from Japan. Uh, we want to take the opportunity to to thank them for believing in this and for leading the charge in terms of uh, partner support. And we don't want to underestimate, of course, the very important and significant contribution from the national private sector, <clears throat> where we recorded um, 1.2 uh, billion. <clears throat> now, um, what are the other partners doing? That's a very good question. And I would think when you have the opportunity to ask them, ask them the question. Ask the other partners what they are doing. It is important to recall that almost at the beginning of the existence of this plan, we were privileged as a nation to have the visit of the uh, Minister of Foreign Affairs of one of Cameroon's leading partners, friendly countries. I'm talking of uh, the then Minister of Foreign Affairs of France, Mr. Jean-Yves Ledrian, who in, um, uh, during his stay in Cameroon actually announced a contribution of 40 billion from uh, the French Republic to the efforts of reconstruction and development of the Northwest and Southwest regions. Um, thereafter, we are still waiting, and we continue to wait with hope that um, that promise will come to, to, to maturity. We are looking up to, let me put it in very raw terms, to redeeming that pledge. We think um, 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 the level of relationships, the level of um, relationship that exists between Cameroon and France does not give us any window to doubt that uh, that pledge will be redeemed, that it will become mature, and the resources will be availed. <laughs> Doctor, you listen to Portas on the <laughs> right on, move from where you ended. not be able to hear him on my end. Uh, I think if you can tell me a little bit, or just give a summary, a recap of what he was saying. Then I yes, will he was talking talk. about French, uh, that pledged 40 billion francs, uh, the CFA, I'm talking about the French government. And up to today, the money is, is, is not forthcoming. And he says he hopes and he does not want to have doubts that uh, uh, the French Republic is no longer behaving like uh, one of the leading partners or friendly countries of Cameroon. Uh, Mr. Lasha, I would tell you that uh, um, we, we, un it's unfortunately very, very sad that uh, uh, we seem to put the economic interest ahead of the human interest. And that is what is so pathetic. Because uh, you see, if this money keeps coming, this war will last for 50 years. Because they need more of this money. Is, is the money is the money even free? free? Is the money free, doctor? Is the money free? When they say a uh, pledge to give, is it? It, it, is it, 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 it boils down to that, that we will pay. We, the younger generation, and our children, children will pay. Nothing is given for free by the white man to anybody in this world. The issue is, Mr. Lasha, before we arrive at the state of talking about money, why can a simple problem that began with lawyers and teachers? cannot be resolved with the strategies that some of us as conflict. But, but doctor, manager. you call you call it simple problem. There are people who have guns, AK-47. <laughs> you see, call it before a simple it, problem. Before you collect it to that level, was it not a problem that could have been taken care of? And if at this level it has arrived at what it is right now, is it still late for us to take care of it? It's simple. I went online, I went to Africa Media, and I gave a simple diagnostic of the situation and how to resolve this problem. Do you know that medically, it takes a greater number of bacteria to stamp out a, small, a smaller number of bacteria? The medication for coronavirus is coronavirus itself. The medication for bacteria is bacteria itself. It only takes four. 
a specialist to go into the laboratory, manufacture a greater bacteria, to stamp out the smaller bacteria. Who are the bigger bacteria in this case? The people who are in jail, you start with them. Then you come to some of us who are at the beginning of this issue. Then the voices in the bushes will hear the voices and they will stop the gun. Sending commissions of the construction, sending all these ministers to go and tell lies and come back. We'll never solve this problem. It takes only those who started the problem to end the problem. Thank so, you. Now, now, Doctor, we, during the meeting, we had uh, diplomatic missions. Those of the United Nations, they were present, and other partners of Cameroon. Are you telling me that those people are not aware that the steps to conflict resolution is being violated? We are escaping, we are escaping the resolution of the problem because I have just told you that it takes only those who started the problem. So why are, they, why are those partners doing that to Cameroon when they know fully well that Cameroon is not following steps to conflict resolution, but they are still supporting Cameroon in rebuilding the northwest because, and southwest. Because because they are business people. Donald Trump told us before that the United Nations is business people. All these are going to pay. How are business people? France is a business person. They are coming to strike business. They put business interests ahead of you. You know, especially when they are dealing with Africans. They know that the black race is close to slaves. So they can do what they want. If Morocco can be killing blacks, crossing into Spain, and the world it can say nothing, it means the black man has been reduced off by animals. We have to stand up. We have to stand up. Okay. Uh, uh, that Est-ce que vous pensez, docteur Nick Santos, que euh, il s'agit donc d'un refus ou bien d'un abandon à résoudre ce conflit dans, dans le nord-ouest et le sud-ouest Parce que vous dites que c'est un problème simple à résoudre. Il faut commencer par ceux qui ont commencé euh, la crise. Donc c'est c'est indépendamment, c'est volontairement qu'ils ne partent pas rencontrer ces personnes là pour résoudre cette crise. Uh, can you take it, uh, Mr. Nasha, can you translate it a little bit? I yes, you, you say it's a simple problem, and Gladys is asking you that, are you saying that government is reluctant, they don't want to go and see those who started the problem at the basic level, like the Mancho BBC are talking about, in whose interest let is the government tell, doing that? Let, let, let me tell Gladys one simple problem, one simple thing. You know, I'm good at carrying out diagnosis of a problem. I'm a psychoanalyst, I'm a psychologist. And in any country in the world, psychologists are needed to resolve problems same as historians are needed as some as lawyers and, and political leaders. I have, I have to carry out my diagnosis across the world with the same region, and even with the government. And although I know that one Cameroon is the way forward because unity is spread, but the issue is if we have to resolve this problem, we have to stamp out the bandits in government who are prolonging this war because they misinform. The stakeholder, especially the head of state, about this problem. The, in, in, any commission of inquiry that has gone down the territory has not been able to come out with a, a factual account of what are the causes of this problem and proposition on how this problem will be resolved. Are you saying that? Are you saying that, you saying that the head of state? They are giving the only put ahead packages that will convince the head of state for money to come. The same like the sixty million or how many million that is coming from. They look at that package. They don't look at how to solve the problem. Because but, let me tell you, if I was the person to advise the head of state, I would say there's no reconstruction for the war. So the, are, you say, are you saying the head of state is not aware of what is actually happening in the northwest and southwest? It's been made important by business people in the government. <rire> Donc il est au courant et puis il, il, il ne résout pas le problème ou bien c'est une partie de personnes dans ce gouvernement qui ne veulent pas que cette crise s'arrête. The people, the people surrounding him knows the business they are playing with this war in Norway and South. Let me tell you. At the detriment of the local population, lives being yes. lost every day. Mr. Lasha, to prove you that there is an investigation I carried out and said. They were looking for some amber leaders who are carrying guns. Nyambere, for example, pointed out to them to arrest the leaders and the, the shot at Nyambere. Which means they know they know they know the business which is going on. Because today, if you point the amber leaders to no pity or any of them to be arrested, you will be killed. Because the war should continue. The livelihood. When you look at the livelihood of the population in the northwest and southwest now, are you happy, doctor? Because sometimes people have to call you. You've been sending money, assisting 
displaced, internally displaced persons. But the minister but did, did say life is returning to normal. People, the, the, the plan has assisted people. That is, what, that is what pains me the most. That is what pains me the most because let me tell you, I'm not going to be taking care of refugees. I've not only been taking care of prisoners by feeding them even during Christmas. But if that pains me the most is about even the boys in the bushes complaining about hunger. <laughs> and cannot drop their guns and come out from the bushes. And they are also begging money to feed in the bushes. Okay, let, let's listen to Paul Tasson once again. Mm, the inter apparently the interview is not ready. Uh... I may not be able to give you specifics in terms of um, what we have done to improve this. But I can demonstrate the, the effects or the impact of what we have been able to do on livelihoods from a different perspective. Our last study of the socio-economic situation of the two regions brings to light some very interesting statistics which you may which you may want to know from the perspective of the economy we looked at the economy from production we looked at it from public finances we looked at it from international trade, particularly with Nigeria, our neighbor to the West. But from the angle of the economy, if you look at the way the economy of the two regions is behaving, then you have no doubt that the impact on the livelihoods of the population is almost palpable. <clears throat> there is no life without food. When we looked at the production of food crops in the two regions, we are very satisfied with what we see. In terms of improvement in numbers, in quantities. Let me give you some very precise data of what we were able to find. What we were able to find. <clears throat> the production of corn in the two regions has improved by 11% between 2020 and 2021. The production of cassava has improved by 9%. The production of rice in DOP has improved by 6%. The number of cattle has increased by 2%. And this trend is maintained across the board. We, of course, to be realistic, we make sure that we looked at everything. And we notice that the production of tea, for example, continues to drop, but it is not as a result of the crisis. Minister Paul Tasson speaking there, uh, trying to give a balance sheet of what the plan has done so far. Uh, Gladys, <laughs> 18 months on uh, talking about production of rice, increasing cattle. Uh, what has that actually got to do with the resolution it? of the conflict? Like, mm. really, what what are we talking about so listen here? To the minister. What are we talking about here? On parle de quoi? On parle de, du plan de reconstruction du nord-ouest et du sud-ouest. Il nous fait un bilan no, du that, maïs. That one is economy. Fait, He's talking economy. Il nous fait, economy. Il nous fait le bilan He's du giving, maïs. Il nous fait le plan sheet. du riz. Qu'est-ce qui nous prouve d'abord que c'est vrai? <laughs> uh, uh, did you listen to Paul Tasson uh, this time around? Um, you know, uh, although I didn't get the volume yet quite late, but I can pick up what you were saying, and it's what I've been saying all the time. When you mis misdiagnose a problem, Yes. Getting a solution. For example, if you have cancer and you are being treated for malaria, is it you are being given another disease in addition to the cancer? So it should die very fast. No, but, but Paul Tasson says uh, the livelihood of the people in the Northwest, no doubt, has, has improved. He talked about 
uh, production of rice that has increased by 6%. He talked about cattle rearing that has increased and so many other stuff, uh, things uh, that, that he said in, in, in the report, uh, <laughs> Dr. Nick Sanders. With the reports you get on the ground, do these things that he's saying confirm with reality? What is happening on the ground is that if you want to measure what he is saying in terms of something happening, maybe he's meaning that he's saying that uh, situations have calmed down, the arms smoking guns have a little bit calmed down, that people are able to resume activities a little bit. Ghost towns that used to be for so many days is now one day. We can understand that that can cause increase in economic activity, but is the problem solved? Is the problem solved? Are all the voices in the bushes out? Are they, have the guns been dropped? Is there peace and stability? Can people who willingly leave out of the United States or leave Europe to come and invest home and be sure of their life, of their security, and, their, and the security of their investment? Are we seeing more containers being shipped uh, in the, into the seaport in Douala because people are at peace? When there's no peace, there's no development. Let me tell you, we have suffered the North and South West region uh, will take a very long time to be reconstructed because we are not resolving the problem at all. All of these are complex solutions. The real issue is don't take a runabout cut. The people who began this problem are the ones who end this problem. Do you think yes, do you think I, that do you think that Bala can stand in the northwest and south west and talk somebody listen to him? Or Mantro BBC if he leaves prison today? and go back to commercial avenue and talk people will listen to him yes a combination a combination of those can talk and people will listen i don't need if i speak people listen they listen because they know that out of 100 things i will say 75 percent is without discrimination or is without bias even the I'm people carrying the, the guns i'm putting the government flag of cameroon behind me because I studied both situations. I had put on the Ambazonia flag behind me. I studied also that situation. Then at the end of the day, I become a doctor of everybody because I don't have to deny patients. Now, if I start to say something, I'm saying something that will help us improve us, lead to peace, lead to peace, lead to security, lead to development, not something that will tear all of us down. Okay, doctor, let's now talk about uh, your yeah, award. We are barely uh, five minutes. Uh, to the end of the program, uh, you've been awarded in the United States of America uh, of, uh, I mean, talking about your, your work, what you have been doing in the U.S. Can you elaborate more on the award? Uh, so we start celebrating you for flying the colors of Cameroon flag higher. Yeah, uh, Mr. Lasha, you know, this came like a surprise to me. I never saw it coming, though there had been some little, little, uh, a uh, uh, glimpse of light that was showing that there was something cooking or boiling at the tunnel. Uh, first, this is about the food award I've had in the United States, four, four awards, but this is the biggest. This is the biggest because this is the U.S. President Lifetime Achievement Award that will be awarded to me in the front of all, front of all diplomats, hopefully by the President uh, of the United States. For the it will take place at the Downtown Conventional Center in Washington, D.C. on the 30th of ends up with a gala night and um, let me tell you that this is the fourth award i've had in the u.s uh, the first was my uh, scholarship award during my doctorate program which was just about uh, 1.2 million cfa 25,000 2 500 dollars when i was in uh, grade school and i also had uh, the california national alliance for mental illness so what have you been doing to have all this award did you, did you tell us more on what because they cannot just give you a word for you for you not doing anything uh, basically basically this are this are this, are, this the, that, that that's why i'm explaining to you that the first one was a scholarship award the second one i had was for helping to treat mentally ill patients in california by the california and uh, alliance for mental illness and then there is also um the Walden University Award that I had as the uh, honorary clinical instructor for 2021 which is basically for me training uh, students who are taking residency in my clinic, in my private clinic in West Virginia. So I grade the students, I treat them, on, I teach them psychotherapy and, and group counseling. And so I had an award last year. And then also you must, you saw that before this award from 
from the east wing of the White House. Uh, I had a, a letter from President Joe Biden sometimes February, in which he was replying to one of my messages I sent to him on some political and uh, humanitarian issues in the U.S. But and in that letter, it was stated that hopefully within the year, or by the end of the year, we shall meet sometime. I never knew that this was really an award that was coming based and this award was given, this award is principally given based on my uh, contribution, my contribution of volunteering to the U.S. in terms of uh, helping professionally to work in the domain of mental health and leadership, mental health and leadership and humanitarian work that I'm doing around the world, uh, my research in, um, uh, in, in, in uh, the challenges to assertive community treatment, you equally, you equally live in a predominantly uh, white state, states uh, where you have only white people. Everything about you is extraordinary, <laughs> Doctor. Uh, have because, you also given up your nationality as a Cameroonian or you are a Cameroonian? I, I, was exa I was about to ask you. I'm still a Cameroonian. I didn't, I didn't go for U.S. citizenship uh, for about 16 years. I refuse. I turned it down because... I was looking at the bigger picture. I was looking at the bigger picture. And uh, the bigger picture, you always know, is home, right? It's home. So, but basically, what I did was, uh, I had a different mindset when I came to this Western world. The mindset was to accumulate or amass as much, as much knowledge as I can and bring it back to my country of origin. Uh, what, what I've been doing so far is, um, I've been integrating mostly with white people because the field I'm doing is psychiatry and uh, psychology and psychiatry, which is mental, uh, mental health altogether. And I think these people are far more advanced in this domain than us. Because with us, when you have a psychological problem, you'll say, go and drink two or three bottles of Expo, and your head will balance. <laughs> but we don't know about emotional problems. We don't know about love issues that can lead to suicide. We don't know about how about about judgment of people we don't we don't read those things we cannot weigh those concepts that are abstract for example we don't measure intelligence intelligence quotient i can measure everyone's intelligence they are supposed to measure it so somebody's uh, grief you can measure somebody's state of happiness somebody's state of you know when to connect with somebody not to say something that will push that person to extreme so we have we lost it all we lost it. Our society has lost it all because, first of all, what is happening in Africa today is because most of our leaders and most of the people around us do not have that. Uh, uh, they, don't, they cannot. They don't empathize. They don't empathize. They don't have empathy. They don't have empathy. You know, empathy is different from sympathy. Empathy is a feeling that you have towards mankind. But sympathy is when like. Somebody loses somebody and you sympathize. No, empathy is different. So we, no. send, we need to. So we, we, need, we don't know about. Yes, we need to work in that domain. Okay. We need to put more efforts in that domain. Yeah, so moving closer to the white people, I've had a lot of training. A lot of training. I mean, like living with them. I like living in an isolated area where so when when are you coaches. when are you expected but back home when when are you expected back home doctor to share your experiences with us try to develop your country never, come just like i never knew when this award will come that's the same thing i cannot say when i'm back <laughs> okay doctor thank you <laughs> thank you that's it the program has come to an end thank you very much dr nick santos for taking our time to talk to us on the line to the United States of America. Hopefully we'll be with you uh, next week if time permits you and uh, we we'll, we'll always are uh, here to welcome you uh, to participate and give your own of nation building. Thank you to Televiewers of Media Prime Television for watching this other edition of The Brief which was produced uh, for us by Christine Tebon. We were Gladys Bomotongina and myself Lasha Kingsley. See you tomorrow. Bye-bye. <laughs>